Hey everybody and welcome to today's live stream with the Oakland A's franchise on MLB The Show 23. This video is going to be all about the top prospects that are in our organization. We are going to wrap up the regular season for year one really shortly. I'm planning on doing this stream so I can get some highlights and talk about these players and then in the following video I put together I'll have highlights from this. We'll break down these prospects there again and also play through the final game of the regular season and take a look at our final stats and that's going to be the last thing we do before our first off season in this franchise so welcome in everybody i plan on getting right into the action here and in the thumbnail of the video we have our top prospect overall which is going to be number 26 in the major leagues catcher tyler soderstrom this is an interesting spot because we already have Shea Langoliers on the active roster. He's one of the better young players we have to develop. And then our second best prospect, well, it just changed. There was a player here the last time I checked it, which is like one day ago in-game. It was another catcher. So we got Shea Langoliers, Tyler Soderstrom, and B-Potential Daniel Susak. 66 overall B potential getting good development this year. I think the team's okay at catcher I'm ready to see what those draft picks do same here And that's why it's only going to be a couple videos before we're on to year two And we get to see what the likes of Aaron Don and Elliot Hughes are actually going to do Now I'm a little torn as to like all right with 70 overall, you can probably give these guys, you know, spring training invites and stuff like that if you really were desperate to. But I want to get Aaron Don development. He has a potential. What's the fastest way to get him, like, to his peak? I think that's playing in the minors. But a player like Luis Estrella, as pointed out in the comments, like, he's basically already at his potential. So, do you consider elevating him really early i don't usually do that because i try to like give these players some minor league experience and you know typically players don't get drafted and just play immediately so i'll have to make a decision on that they do structure things in the show a bit differently it's kind of more designed for you to get to play with these guys sooner than have these long you know rookie ball and long grind up the minors but today, like I said, it's going to be focused on the prospects. And the first thing I'd like to do is just simulate us a little bit later in the season. And that'll allow us just to get closer to the end of the year. And then we'll be able to look at those numbers and realize that they're going to be mostly complete. We just won five of six games here in August. And now we go back to losing a few games in a row. That's kind of a big injury there. Go Sox. Sorry about your twins last night. I was so mad watching the end of that because I thought that the the double that won the game or the hit that won it, I thought just based on the TV angle, it looked to me like it hit off of, a, I don't know, a fan or the screen down the line or something. I Live, I'm like, all right, there's no way this stands. And then... You know, wait three minutes and it does stand and it was just like whatever they should have won this game but twins offense has really been awful to start the year hey kane just got mlb 23 yesterday i'm starting my own franchise keep up the videos love to hear it i think franchise in this game is a really really good time All right, so we're now late September. This is before September call-ups. I think this is kind of the area that I'd like to be in and get some highlights and stuff for these guys. So the Rock Hounds are actually doing pretty good here in the second half of their season. So they're in first place, while the Aviators are continuing to struggle, as are the big league squad. So there are a few players today that I want to highlight and get some player lock games in with. And Jonah Bride's got some of the better numbers down at AAA, but he's a deep potential 27-year-old that I don't think will have uh, a lot of focus for this. 
But Zach Geloff is one that I think we really need to talk about. 67 overall. The ratings are starting to get there, preparing him for his big league debut, I feel. That might be safe for next year, though. I want to keep up uh, the development we have here. You see plus eight contact is really nice. And then Tyler Soderstrom, who is bringing up the average, and now it's basically telling us that we should call him up. So his numbers have been improving over the past uh, handful of simulated games. He was hitting like 202 when I started uh, this stream. Nine homers for him. I do like that our uh, our catchers as well have a lot of flexibility. So, you know, if you've got to find different spots to put these guys, he can play first and the corner outfield spots. Why don't we get into a game here with Tyler Soderstrom? Oh, we got Kyle Muller on the mound here too. It would be nice to see kind of where he is. And then, did I set this up correctly? I messed with the pitching to get innings in for Waldachuk. It's still not playing the guy. That is so annoying. He's the first baseman of the future. He just might be because we don't really have a lot of other options, as you can see. So, I don't care who plays where. As long as we can put together a pretty good squad all around. His defense is nothing spectacular. Langoliers has a better arm but isn't a great fielder yet. Should probably be training some of that fielding if he's going to be like the everyday catcher. And that's all Shea can play. That and DH. So I want to go into our training actually. And change his around. Let's get shade. Oh, I already had him doing fielding drills. So that's good. Soderstrom isn't playing as much as others. Was he hurt? Let me check the lineup there at AAA. Soderstrom here hitting as a catcher and here as a catcher. So 283 at bats. I think the difference is that he might have started the year at AA. Because I don't think he ever got hurt actually. But I, I'm really, like, confused why Waldachuk isn't getting his playing time like he's supposed to. So I'm going to move him down the double A, back up the triple A, and then I'll let the CPU kind of fix this. And hopefully it puts him in as the fifth starter and then it, it solves that. I was told that in a comment that it could work that way. So I may get into a full game here at AAA to start things off because it'd be nice to pitch with Kyle Muller, talk about the progress he's been making this year. And then, um, you know, does he look in better shape going into the rotation again next season? So we'll start off here with a nice full game and then get into some player lock stuff, I think. So basically, this is me getting extra recording in for the next video and just being able to get a, uh, a stream out today as a piece of content. And then just one more full episode before we get on to the off season. Got Soderstrom here in the three spot. Jonah Bride, Zach Geloff. We got to bring him up in the order, I think. Who else do I want to play with here? I think I'm okay with the way we have it set up. Taking on the Salt Lake Bees. Yes, Baez was the player I traded for last episode, so a, a chance to see him in this will be really nice. I'm doing pretty well, Mike. How you doing? Yeah, I probably should get Susak up the double A if he's playing this well, because he's only at A ball. Yeah, like you said. There's JJ Blade, Kyle Muller. So the first 11 starts for him this year were at the big league level, and that was shaky to say the least. And now he's not terrific at triple A, but. He's starting caliber down there, at least. 
So let's get this underway. The Aviators. That's a line drive right at Diekman to start things and a quick one pitch out. How old is Muller? So I believe he's only about 25 years old. So he's one of those guys that we're really hoping ends up being a part of this rotation going forward. He has a little bit of Major League experience, but it hasn't been good experience. Do I have any good sliders for Madden 23 franchise PS4? I don't know about PS4 sliders. I'd probably see what's popular over on Operation Sports for last gen stuff. But I'm not sure what people are doing there these days. Ooh. That's a nice strikeout for Kyle Muller. So what do we think about some of these rookies, or the, not rookies, they're not rookies until they make it to the bigs, but these draft picks of mine, like, we have Aaron Dunn, who's going to open as a 70 overall. Do we start him off at double A and then just quickly move him up to triple A if he does well and go from there? Like, how do you guys usually handle this stuff? That's strike three. Looking, Muller is cooking here in the first Do I see any core players building blocks heading into season two? I see some, but I'd like to see a lot more. That's for sure. I think that we have, uh, you know, our catcher spots in good hands and Soderstrom should be able to maybe man first base like was talked about earlier. I kind of like the stance here for Pablo Reyes. I've never hit with him before. Big leg kick in there. Don't waste big league development when you are a bad team. Yeah, at the end of the day, I want players to have a chance to reach that potential. And if they can't do it at the big league level, then they got to do it down in the minors somewhere. I don't want to rush things along either. I think it's an interesting question, though, for Estrella when he's already, like, at his potential. And then I wonder, too, like, you know, keeping service time in mind. So what's the cutoff for a year of service time? If I want to maybe call up a player and, you know, game the system a little bit like teams do in real life to where they'll be up but not long enough to accrue a full year and move their free agent year back one. one and two, count. What level is the first round pick playing at? So they don't play as soon as they're drafted here. I don't get to actually do anything with them until next season. But in real life, they'd be playing rookie ball. And then, like, maybe fall league stuff. One. Soderstrom as well. Do we think he's playing well enough to get to, uh, to training camp next year, spring training? He's not on the 40-man roster, so I'd have to elevate him to bring him to training camp. But I think that's one of the conversations. Is he ready for uh, that next year? And then Zach Geloff, I think, is also pretty close. Another corner infielder who's going to end the inning for us here. But he's been definitely one of our best hitters down in the minor leagues this season. Joe Adele. I had a seven-pitch first here with Kyle Muller. 171 days at the bigs to get an extra year. 172 counts as a full year. Okay. So you can call them up relatively early and still not have it count for a full season. Hundred and thirty ABs in real life before they lose rookie eligibility.
I think it's one of those things that we have to keep in mind with this team just because, like, it's a cheap organization and every little thing helps. And, you know, pushing back that, that team control an extra year, I think, makes a big difference. Two quick strikes here for Muller on Velasquez. That's on the ground. Geloff going to go to thir uh, first base. I pump fake there to second. Wasn't sure we'd get him. Ball. Is the Rockies series over? I don't think you've seen the last of the Rockies, but... I don't know that it's going to come back in the in the same capacity. You know, I've been working on that series now for a couple of years, and I'm trying to get to the point right now where I can really get new projects like this one where I want them, and I want to spend, you know, the time I want on the Titans franchise, and I think with uh, how the year three season went, like, I need more time to get that team built up and for the series to eventually feel complete. So, I'll sit down at some point with the Rockies, and I'm probably going to do some sort of uh, expedited season. Trying to come up with what would be, you know, right for that concept. But I really want to get to the point where I don't have a lot of these series that are hanging around forever. I've talked plenty in the last few weeks about how I've definitely been re-strategizing things on the channel and how many things I'm doing and how much I want to do them and it's still a little tricky getting that finished and then when does UTSA come back and I'll have more to share I think as time goes on because I I'm toying around with a couple ideas and once I know whether or not they work I can kind of give you a better idea of what's going to happen but my focuses here going forward are going to be this series and then the Titans franchise. Everything else is kind of to the side right now. That might fall? No? Okay. All right, Joshua Baez. Traded for him. I think he's pretty close to his chance to make it to the bigs as well, especially in our organization. Down the line and right foot hooking foul. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, they took away the ability to do the year-to-year uh, -year saves, so I could not just transfer the Rockies franchise. They haven't introduced that feature again on the PS5, so now your franchises are locked to one game, which definitely uh, sucks. I think that it's nice to be able to move your team from one game to the next and really want them to bring that feature back. But one of the things that I am I'm looking to do going forward, or I guess not to do, is I don't really want a lot of series that go multiple years like that. Like crossing over with a brand new game, but not playing the new game. I think I've talked a lot about kind of those plans, and I'm just kind of repeating myself at this point. That's into right. Going to drop on in here. Diekman will hold him to a single. First trip through the order, though, went pretty well for Kyle, Kyle Muller. Auto fielding? I don't think so. I know it can play, play well, but I think I like having the control. I don't want to give it up entirely.
Back-to-back -back hits here, and now Reyes will work over and make the catch. Kyle Muller is the ultimate 4A player right now. Well, hopefully he can be a little bit more than that. We, we need something. We need some sort of success story. Ooh. I'm really excited, though, to see what chances we have to get players in the Rule 5 draft, though. There you go, pitching around the two singles, and Muller is through three. What prospects are we looking at right now? So this is just kind of a broad look at AAA. The main reason I'm playing this game in full is to get a game in with Kyle Muller. So it's really focused on him and then whatever hitters show up here. You know, there's a lot of players at AAA that I think are close, could contribute, could make the bench. J.J. Bladé, unfortunately, hasn't had a great year at the plate, so don't see him as one of those players right now. I think at one point he was a higher-rated prospect, but he does have some big league experience. It just didn't go all that well. Yeah, four and a half ERA at AAA isn't fantastic either, but uh, I'll take what I can get with these guys. I'm hoping to get through this season in the next episode. So today I'm streaming just to show off a lot of players down in the minor leagues and talk about who could be part of our future. I'll take clips from this stream, I'll put them in the next video, and I'll have a more condensed look at the prospects. And then I want to play our season finale, look at our stats, and put a bow on this season. So one more video which will be coming out on Friday. Any plans for a new stadium? I do want to work on a new stadium. I think that I'd like to debut that closer to when the team is maybe turning the corner and have that kind of help mark the new era for A's baseball I have to get into the creator see what I can come up with and hopefully I can do something that is fun to play in and look at too that's a base hit for Kevin Smith oh yeah I totally post the stadium on the vault absolutely any free agent targets in mind honestly not really you know, I think that we're not going to be very aggressive in free agency, but, you know, like the Aledmus Diaz's of the world, maybe some solid role players. That's kind of the player I would be targeting. Or maybe players who maybe haven't reached their full potential, and maybe we can get them there and then trade them. Those kinds of players I want to add. And then anybody who's just very undervalued. No need to be aggressive until we're in better shape to start competing for something. I want to keep roster spots opened up for these young guys and not just waste money on veterans that aren't going to get us closer to one of our goals. So if there's like a 30-year-old prospect or a 30-year-old free agent who's really good but is kind of capped out at this point, that's not going to be our target. Pretty late on these last two strikeouts. Cody Bellinger? I mean, guys like Bellinger that you're buying low on, totally. Buy low guys, guys who have slumped but maybe had a good year or two in the past. Those are the kinds of guys I'm in on. I know Cody Bellinger is going to be a free agent because he signed a one-year deal with the Cubs. I don't know if I'll be considering him specifically, but maybe. Rule 5 is going to be really fun with such a talent, poor organization. Absolutely. I think that's the fastest way for us to start building up this bullpen, considering, you know, we got big leaguers in, like, the 56 overall range. 
It's not a lot to work with. I'm right there with you, Chris. No reason to be a cheap owner in one of the big sports in America. You're running a business at that point, not a baseball team. No, that's out. My favorite prospect, it can be from any level. Um, Soderstrom's a good one. It probably would be Soderstrom. There's just not a lot of competition unless you consider the guys that I drafted. Then it starts to get a little more interesting with Aaron Don and uh, some of the pitching we got. Right, we might pick up five guys in the Rule 5 draft. I don't know. So the plan for me is going to be to, like I said, finish off the season next episode. And then the off season is to follow. And then would there be interest in me doing anything for spring training? Maybe, maybe it's like a stream and then a video or something like that. Just to try out some players we drafted in the Rule 5. Maybe there are some guys, you know, like Tyler Soderstrom could get an invite. And we can focus on how his spring went. Would you like a spring training video? I don't want to rebrand the team because I would lose the uniforms and then be stuck with only a home and road uniform. And that's just not any fun. All right, I think that's my plan then. You know, I don't want spring training to drag on. But at the same time, I'm thinking about, all right, what's next week going to look like? Because it's, uh, it's the NFL draft. That's one of my favorite weeks of the year. So... You know, streaming spring training a couple times would definitely be something that would be nice because it's just easier. And I'm extremely distracted during draft week. At the same time, I have streaming to do for the Titans franchise. I will have the off season this weekend. And then I'm going to have a preseason to follow. So we'll have New Year's in both series coming up this coming week. Oh and one. Zach Geloff, I think, is a pretty interesting player as well. He is 23 years old, plays third base, and that is all. Now, uh, his contact's in a decent spot at the moment. Defense as well. I definitely like to see him maybe get that spring training invite as well. He's somebody else I'd have to put on the 40 man. That's Gell off to left center and down for a hit. He's got good wheels too for a, a corner infielder. Hendon hooker to Minnesota rumors. I'm not a fan of it really at 23, but I wouldn't be against it like in principle. Ah. One, one. Will Sidney Jean Charles come back? I don't think that road to the show will come back. Nope. Ball. I unfortunately can't do everything. That would be fun. I'm trying to get better about. Well, I sawed him off at the hands and popped out. Just try not to overextend myself. I only want to do as much as I can do to the level that I'm happy with. And that right now is focusing on two series for the time being. And we'll see what's uh, to follow after, you know, we get a couple, maybe more months into this series or something. The Rule 5 draft streamed is what you're asking about, Zorgrim. I haven't yet decided if I want to stream the offseason for this series. I might do that one on my own. I think there would be some interest, though. I'm streaming on Saturday for my... 
Titan series, and then I guess Sunday, if I wanted to, I could stream that. I'll consider it. Because if I take that time to stream, then I can probably work on getting some other uploads taken care of for next week, which is the busy one, draft week. I don't think I will get a mock draft video up this year either. I missed it last year. I just don't know if I'll have the time to do it, focusing on the series. But I think that I may end up streaming after day one to uh, talk about the fallout, especially if something interesting happens with my favorite team, Minnesota Vikings. I like to talk about the draft kind of while it's in progress. I don't really do uh, a lot of pre-draft stuff. All right. Things are getting rocky here in the fifth. Whatever. I'm warming up while the chuck because it just won't get this guy innings. I'm so annoyed with that. Two balls, no strikes. You went to school with the guy on first base. That's pretty cool. I wish I got him out. There you go, out in front. It's the nine hitter. You got to be able to deal with him. Wow. Three and two. Muller missed badly, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. Looking for a Minnesota trade up or maximize on prospects? Either or. Like, to me, perhaps staying at 23 is the least desirable result. Either go up and find a quarterback or trade back and try to plug a few more gaps on this team or get a future first round pick in 24. There you go. Come on. On the ground, gonna go home first and back to first base, we got the double play. Three, two, three. Who's the player in any series that you were most disappointed that you couldn't draft them? Yeah, Christian's on the nose there. I think being able to play with Jesse Heikinen after building him up a bit in the Kalispell dynasty would have been really fun. And then, uh, Corin Haggerty, because I've never found another player quite like him. This might be his last batter. See if he can finish off the fifth inning for us. 3 2. Missed low. I haven't really seen a lot of examples of potential moving. I thought that it would move up or down more, but I'm just not really seeing that. What do you think? Put in Waldachuk or have Muller try to finish off the inning? Corin Haggerty was in my, uh, I don't remember what series now, but he was drafted by the Jaguars. He was uh, a six foot four corner with like blazing speed, just a ridiculous athlete. Yeah, I hadn't made a decision yet on Estrella with his potential and how odd that situation of his is. I was in the Chargers series. Yeah, he was a rare athlete at corner. I did know EA bought Super Mega Baseball. I want to know what they're doing with it. We're going to keep him in. Soderstrom blocked it. Come on, Muller. Get control of your slider. Slider away to the lefty. Chargers franchise feels like an actual eternity ago. Yeah. 
two and one. Got him out in front, and now I think I'm going back to the the curveball. Two and two. He went around, right? No. Ah, oh, three and two. Miss low, and that's a run. And that's going to be it. We're getting Ken Wall the Chuck in there because the game won't play him any other way. The A's already have a run di differential of negative 76. That's impossible. How can you already be down 76? There's no way. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Aviators, number 64, Ken Waldeck. I got to see this for myself. The A's have a negative 76 run differential. They do. They've scored 63 runs in 18 games and allowed 139 runs. Only two other teams have allowed over 100 runs and they've allowed 139. Joe Adele versus Ken Wall, the Chuck. There you go. Got ahead of Adele. One and two. What a pitch. I can't believe that didn't end it. That's equally impressive. That's a ball. Two, two. Got him. That was an impressive AB. He had some good stuff in that. Yeah, he's been resting for two months. There's Joshua Baez, only 19 years old, one of the youngest, like, high upside players in the organization. I'd like to score in this game. Whatever happened to the Madden 19 Dolphins franchise? Couldn't get the game to play well. Couldn't do it. Got frustrated. Moved on. EA kept dropping updates that messed with my uh, sliders and just felt unfixable. Way up there. JJ Blade. I feel like Bachman's been pitching all right today, not giving me as many meatballs as I'd like to see. Ah, doesn't help if you miss them. Ah, I haven't looked as much at the clutch stat. Should I be? My favorite NBA team. I mean, I want the Timberwolves to win, but I'm not really a big NBA fan. Wolves were awful for basically my entire childhood outside of the KG era, so they missed a chance to get me to care. That is grounded to first. Nice cover. I haven't seen any pitching repertoires in the scouting reports, which is kind of odd to keep that information hidden. Ball. 
Into right center. Lazy fly ball. Pretty sure it goes off clutch once runners get into scoring position. Is that a lot more uh, important in this game? I suppose I'll have to pay attention to it. I know there's training you can do that specifically focuses on clutch. Ooh. I'm glad we're getting a look at Waldachuk as well here. Like, if he's got a pitch out of the bullpen just to get him out there, like, I'll allow it. But it's a weird bug I have not been able to squash. Surprise, you drafted a knuckleballer. Like, that'd be awesome, but I'd want to know beforehand. One ball, no strike. Not giving up a ton of hard contact here in this game. The walks hurt. A few singles and another double play ball. Being a Vikings fan, what are your thoughts on the Lions offseason so far? I think they've been making mostly good moves the last two to three years. I think that they see blood in the water here in the NFC North, and they're going for it this year. They finish the season very strong. They've loaded up on some veterans in the secondary. I think their defense will be improved. And their defense did improve over the course of the season last year. I think, uh, I forget what really triggered the, the switch for them, but, like, first eight games compared to the final nine, they were much more competitive after a while. Didn't they fire their DB coach? Got him. Yeah, I think the Lions are in best position to go take the NFC North this year, personally. Trey Lance to Minnesota is an option. I would be in favor, but I wonder what the uh, compensation would be. We haven't seen a lot of Trey Lance, and what we have seen hasn't been great, and one of those games was also played in uh, some of the worst conditions you'll ever see an NFL game played. It was bad enough for the Bears to beat him. I would be open to the idea, though. I think they've got to make an aggressive push to get their next quarterback, and I think either you've got to trade up for a guy this year if you can find a way, or you, you do something like moving uh, for trade Lance, or you trade down with 23 and maybe secure picks for 24. Like, one of those three outcomes, I think, needs to happen. I'm not really content taking a quarterback at 23 or a quarterback later on. Your chances, first off, significantly drop if you're selecting, like, the fifth quarterback of the draft. Now you're starting to play around with, like, Tom Brady math. That's Soderstrom into the gap. There's a hit. What about the Vikings and Lamar Jackson? My issue there, I love Lamar. My issue is that you'd be paying Lamar so much money that you then need to find some way to repair your defense when you haven't been able to draft players the last four years to get starting roles. If you're going to pay a quarterback massive money like that, you need to have young pieces around him to build a full team because you can't do it with veterans. And the Vikings don't have those young guys that you need to make that construction work. On the ground, softly tapped a second. What's going on, Chris? 
Imagine if the 49ers never passed on Aaron Rodgers. Wouldn't that be a great alternate timeline? I want to see if Waldachuk can pretty much finish this game for us. He's like a second starter. That's for Bride. They just keep barely hitting it out of reach. Why don't you hit a sharp single one of these days? I did. There you go. Tonight we've turned, or they've turned three double plays, or have we? We have at least two that I remember vividly. Trying to do it again. Runner goes. Soderstrom's arm on display, but that was a really good jump. Do I watch MLB a lot? Yeah, I have been quite a bit. I think it's been a pretty fun start to the year so far. That's a line out. Trying to go to second. Just the patient Yankees fan waiting for Boone to be fired. It's a yearly tradition for Yankee fans. Shouldn't you wait until they lose a playoff series to Cleveland or something? I thought he was going. I don't plan on doing big league stuff in this stream. This is a prospect oriented stream and that should have been strike three. Lose the ALCS to the Astros. Yeah, that's that's a good episode. I did play a little baseball and football, but honestly learning terminology and stuff learned way more as a fan than brief time playing in school. Bride has it. Just surround yourself with the game and you'll pick up stuff over time. There you go. Mad Max just got ejected with a foreign substance on his glove. He took Domingo Herman's glove? How'd he get it? Allen Robinson to the Steelers? Did that happen? What do I think of that? Geloff. Oh, he's got to make the play. And does. Um, man. A-Rob fell off uh, a lot in the last couple of years. At this point, honestly, guy's going on to his fourth team. I don't think much of it. You know, it's a buy low on a guy who, for a time, was a very good receiver. Swap sevens and the Rams are paying 10 mil of his contract. Yeah, that's as close as you can get to trading a guy for free. How many teams did Moss go on? Um... Vikings to the Raiders to the Patriots back to the Vikings to the Titans and then San Francisco so five so teams four and five were nondescript for even Randy now, I don't see too many Jerry Rice uh, Seahawks jerseys out there either Just a little early on that one. Yeah, Randy was only with the Titans for maybe four weeks. T.O. I'm not even sure I can name all the T.O. teams. Ah. Oh. Started in San Francisco. And then, obviously, he had his time in Dallas. But 
Remember when he was a raven, but things never became official or whatever, and then, like, he was, like, retraded to, like, Buffalo? And then, did he have a short stint in Seattle? Oh, yeah, he was with the Eagles. I hardly remember that. Bengals. He was with the Bengals. Man. That's a lot to keep up with. He played with Chad? He played in the Arena League, I think. Or an Arena League team at, like, a very old age. Oh, yeah. 2K5, he was with the Eagles on that cover. That's a... That's what I should have gotten. For some reason, the Dallas years stand out way more. Because I think it was... There was that issue with the Ravens before he was traded to the Eagles. And then Dallas followed. And I remember Buffalo was maybe one year. I would be interested in stealing more, yes. But... I don't got the speed to do it at the moment. How much you can do about that? Do I think Ocho Cinco is a Hall of Famer? Probably not a Hall of Famer. Closer to a uh, Team Ring of Honor caliber. There you go. Got the slurve working. Slider away to a lefty. He had a 99 yarder with the Bills. I'll have to check that one. Who threw it? Was he there at the same time as Fitzmagic, or is it a different quarterback? Because that was around the same time frame. Do I like soccer? Not huge, but I feel like I'm coming around to it and starting to understand it a little bit better. But I don't have, like, a team or even a league I follow or anything. 2009 Fitzmagic? See... People actually didn't like Fitzpatrick much when he was with the Bills. I That's how I remember it. Because he played like five games one year, got a big deal, and then things did not work out at all. And then he became everybody's favorite quarterback when he had the long beard and he was a different team's backup every year. Down the line and foul. AC Milan. Recruit me to your soccer club challenge. Oh, man. Long time, first time. Love your content. Stupid question. Do you have the gameplay settings you use for franchise listed anywhere? This is the best I can do for you, Andrew. Got a uh, Hall of Fame difficulty. I know I, I, I've wanted to make the video. I still haven't made the video on all my settings and why I use what I use. But classic pitching, you aim, pick your pitch, that's it. You can teach your dog to do classic pitching. Um, button, swing input, timing, hitting interface. Those are the main things to, uh, to get right. And then this is my, uh, my display settings. Hopefully that helps you out. Don't become a Chelsea fan. I was born into it. Yeah, I prefer to like... You know what the Vikings are in the NFL? Stay... Keep me as far away from like the Premier League equivalent. Please. Awesome, Andrew. Glad that worked for you. Weren't you originally using Pulse for pitching? I've never really messed around with Pulse a ton. I used to use Meter. But then it was like, you know, I want the pitcher ratings to matter more than if I'm good at the meter. I felt like I was pretty good at the meter. 
I could have pretty good games with just about anybody I had. I'm like, I gotta make this more ratings based. I tried classic pitching, and it took like less than 10 pitches before I was like, yeah, I'm never going back. Oh, so you mean like a Tottenham fan like me? Have they never won anything, but they get close, get your hopes up, and crush you every year? Do not be an Arsenal or Man United fan. We're desperate for a run here. A hanging slider timed up beautifully, and that's all we can do with it, man. I feel like I'm using one of those plastic wiffle ball bats when I'm playing in the minor leagues. That's what I'm talking about, Sushi. I bet that meeting could have been an email. Oh no, that curveball got me bad. What do I think of the indoor football league? That's a minor league of the XFL? I didn't even know it existed. You're telling me the XFL is going to have a minor league? And the USFL is going to field teams? That was fine. Is player growth based on performance? Performance and potential. But you need the performance to reach your potential. You can have an A potential prospect who never pans out because, you know, he never hit more than like low 200s and sometimes that just happens with guys and they do not succeed. Yeah, I saw the Arena League is looking to come back at some point, but I don't know if that's uh legit or what I watched like the first month of XFL I watched quite a bit of it but with baseball back not so much I know Philip Lindsay uh, made his debut the other week but uh, I haven't watched XFL in a little bit it feels like there's a hundred things I'd in be interested in doing and I got time for about six nice catch so it's unfortunate a lot of things I'd like to do do not make the cut. The arena football game for PS2 is awesome. I fired it up last year. I'll have to make a video on it sometime here during the summer because it is a really fun gameplay experience. I like it a lot. Tapped it weekly. Geloff will take care of it. We are one out away from getting through this with only two pitchers. And it's the two I wanted to focus on, so this is very good for peak efficiency. Uh, quarterback one to me, based on what I have seen, is uh, Bryce Young. When Carolina moved up to one, to me that was going to be for Bryce Young. I mean, it was an aggressive move. You gave up your top receiver. Do you do that for, well, I mean, obviously any team can have, you know, Stroud as their number one or Richardson as their number one. But to me, a move like that usually signals you're going to take the guy and Bryce Young is the guy. But we'll see. He's 31 of 38. He's about to blow his eighth save of the year. Got our 3-4-5 due up. Soderstrom leads off. We need highlights. I need something to work with. Strike one at the knees. The Hertz Mega Contract. Not all that surprising. I mean, based on how he played last year and that team's success, he was going to get a big deal. Happy for him. When he was, uh, you know, going through the draft process, he was one of those guys where, you know, I've said it many times on stream, where I wasn't sure if he would pan out as a quarterback 
but I'd have to see it fail first because I really liked Hertz at Oklahoma. And I, I wasn't thinking he'd be this good or anything, but he's one of those guys where it's like you've just got to find out for yourself. And the Eagles did that. Soderstrom! What more can I do? Zach Kelloff. No. Your ball, one strike. I wanted to check. No, I don't want to be 0 2. One, two. Levis is getting hate. It's similar, I think, to the Josh Allen thing that happened pre-draft where he played on a bad team that couldn't protect him, didn't have a great supporting cast, and also had accuracy problems. It's a lot of, a lot of parallels there. Oh, I, I meant to hold back on that swing. I just tap circle lightly on that one. And I think it's also, you know, he's getting first round attention, so people will push back, and they've got easy ammunition to do it. Oh, is that the rumor that he's had bad draft interviews? Yeah, that can uh, that can make or break some guys. I think especially at a position that's so leadership and communication heavy like quarterback. That might be catchable, and this game is not quite over. He almost took out the, the ball boy stool. This is fisheye too, but it's a slightly adjusted camera. No! I wish it was... E the only thing I wish is it was easier to check swing. Using button hitting. But... Unfortunately, that's, that's the game. A one nothing loss. We walked in a run. We had nine total hits. I have a lot of pitching highlights for that. That's it. All right. I'm going to start doing some player lock games now, and I am really hoping we get some offense. We got September call-ups here in a few days as well. Um, what if we go down to double A? Position players at double A. Logan Davidson. We should probably do a Davidson game. B potential shortstop. Switch hitter. 25 years old. Hitting 245 this year with 10 homers. None of these guys are really going to blow you away with their offensive numbers, but... Got some solid players to talk about. Let's do player lock with him. Josh Baez, okay. While the Chuck player of the game. Did he get player of the game and we lost one nothing? I mean, like, were you gonna give a player of the game to the guy that walked on a changeup that hit like a foot in front of home plate? It's probably the right move. Or their closer. Because I had a couple ugly strikeouts against him. So I can't play with the rookies until next year. Mm. 
That was actually like the A's uh, starter for next game. And Logan Davidson. Where are we in the Grand Canyon? Amarillo, is this where we're supposed to be? Davidson! I love all this great contact that's going to the wrong spot. The sod poodles. What is a sod poodle? Right at him. Gobbled up. Adley Rutschman for MVP. 323 average with a 995 OPS. He's been crushing it. Had that uh, walk off a few days ago. Mount Castle's been hitting a lot of uh, extra base hits too. Got him there. Sod poodles are prairie dogs. Gotcha. Sod poodles. I, I really want to score a run. Hammered to right field. Do we get our wish? It's foul. You got to be kidding me. What do you mean? I just played a whole game where I didn't score, and you're going to make that go foul? Absolutely not. I like that, the Amarillo Armadillos. I can't believe that went foul. Oh, wait. I put a marker down there. I wasn't sure where to go. Get me back in the batter's box as soon as possible. Beautifully done. Logan Davidson. Just checking something on my end with the streaming. All right, good. How you doing, Jay? I'm doing pretty good. Can't score a run, but I'm doing all right. Lego City Undercover, good game. It's been ported to a bunch of modern consoles, too. I had fun with it. Come on, Logan, we gotta score a run. That's on the ground, and he's not gonna beat this out. Congrats to you, Jay, that sounds awesome. What's your ETA on Davidson? He's 25 now. I'd say next year. Up at AAA probably and might even get a spring training invite. I'll have to see how the 40 man comes together. How many picks we end up having in the rule five. Hammer to left center field, and this one is run down. I, I just can't buy a hit. So I'm not using the target throwing on uh, this, just because I think for franchise, I prefer to have the uh, just let the fielding ratings take care of it over the showtime stuff. I like Showtime for Road to the Show. 
That's a good changeup. Kinda. How far away is Rule 5 draft? That'll be in the offseason. It's held in the winter. I like taking it seriously, Joker. I try. That's a ball. That was close. On, big dog. I want to be responsible for a run scored. I feel like they might have, Andrew. I felt like in the 22, they talked about the renewable deals kind of being done automatically. Can anyone let me know? Because I haven't played franchise on 22, and I haven't gone through the off-seasons really in this game. I have some well-hit... Fouls and outs in that one. I thought it was just an option to automate. You can auto if you want. Well, there's that option. I haven't really seen it, though. It is annoying for a few minutes, though. Mason Miller throw 102 today? Really? Yeah, I heard they called him up. Is he, uh, oh, he's already made his debut today. Where's Mason Miller in here for us? We have him down at a ball C potential. So in real life, he just got called up to the majors. Now, C potential isn't going to wow you, but, like, that's good enough to make a roster. Not good enough to be a superstar, but, you know, these big league rosters, you might have a few A and B potential guys, but your depth is largely going to be C potential solid players. And C potential shouldn't be viewed as, like, you know, bad. So we just had a game with Davidson. I couldn't get a hit. Trenton Brooks, 15 homers, 285, but D potential. Like, can potential just not change whatsoever? That's my one big complaint is I think that potential should be fluid every year. Let me see the lineup here. D potential there. D potential there. We talked about Davidson. Brooks has D. C there for foil. It's tough. Let me see the A ball roster. Yeah, we're going to bring up Darrell. Her nice. We're going to put him at double A, 69 overall. Denzel Clark. I think I want to also bring him up to the double A level. I want to bring Mason Miller up to the double A level. And Daniel Susak up to the double A level. Got a couple B potential guys here, but we'll let them continue to grind uh, at A ball. Well, depending on what we already have at uh, second base there. So, Ernie Clement. Like, yeah, we can probably send him down. Maybe bring up 
Poison. Never quite seen that name before. Got to send a bunch of guys down to it looks like, but... Now you're good enough to stay. But Cody Thomas, you're on your way to A-ball. I got uh, five outfielders there. I probably have too many infielders right now at, at double A. We'll send down Cooper Bowman. Anybody from double A that should go up? Should we get Davidson some triple A experience now? <clears throat> Let's bump him up then. And let me see. At triple A, we have five outfielders, eight infielders. Let's get rid of one. Too many third basemen there. We'll send down Brett Harris. Two, three, four, five, six, seven infielders. We'll put Schumann down. Oh, you can't. It's on the IL. Trenton Brooks. Trying to get this down to uh, 26. Might have a whole new lineup to build here, but I might do a double A game. I'm probably going to let it do like an auto. Ooh, James Caprillion just got hurt for us here. He's probably going to finish the season on the injured list then. And just, uh, I'll auto fix that lineup and then I'll edit it to my liking. I just called up Forrest Whitley for us. Made that move without my approval. Made his debut without my approval. That's annoying. I have everything set to, uh, manual. But if your roster gets to a certain point, it will do stuff for you. Let me save my file quick. I don't mind uh, him being there, though. 25 years old. See what he's got. We traded for him this year. That's fine. Fujinami's ERA just continues to go down. This is awesome. He's actually having a really solid year now. Let's see. Should I bring up a pitcher then? Yeah, we can bring up Stecken Rider, I think. Just, uh, he's an older guy. Just, we could use an extra pitcher there. He's not on the 40 man, though. 
I'll put him on the 40 man for now. I know this is a lot of uh, tedious management stuff, but it's one of those things you got to do in baseball. A lot of innings going to our long relief guys, like 134, 142. What if I just don't have two long relief guys? They get so much, like 23 innings here for Sam Mall, 10 for Familia. How many of those did I pitch? The starters are bad. I feel like these guys should be getting plenty of innings, though. Like, 10 is pretty ridiculous. So, it doesn't want to play Waldachuk in the starting role. So, I'll just leave him as the long relief guy at AAA. Got to make it work somehow. I need another reliever. Anybody else I can bring up? This is just not a lot to work with. Might have to go sign a, a free agent reliever quick. Just to play at AAA. I don't need anybody great. I need someone who will just take a cheap one-year deal to finish off the season for us. Roster's full. How is the roster full and I need more? Oh, I have three AAA guys on the injured list right now. Got Plastmeyer hurt. So we got two pitchers hurt there. That's part of why this is happening. Pitch Astadio. That's what I'm talking about. I should check waivers. Let's see. Ildemaro Vargas, third base. Not a pitcher. Not going to make a claim here. Well, just going to have to make something happen here. We'll move up uh, somebody the double A and then somebody from double A. Up to triple A, just for the time being. I want to play a game with Gunnar Hogland at double A. Because he's the pitcher down there that offers the most upside, I feel. So. That's going to be what we do next. 16 starts this year, 101 innings, a 3.2 ERA, 80 strikeouts, 12 quality starts in 16 chances, 3 war, like he's having a really good year at double A. And when is his turn? Of course, it's the second, so we're going to have to go past the September call-up stage to get there. I have to remove a pitcher from the roster. There's too many. And then I'll auto-fix their lineups. 
The Athletics have 26. They must have 28. Like, they make me call up two guys. I have to. So, I need a 28-man roster. Who from AAA should we be calling up here? You can bring back Muller and see if he can finish out the season a little bit better. I'm not against that. He's on a cold streak right now, though. Soderstrom, probably not going to do it here. Waldachuk. I don't know. I have to call up two guys, though. I mean, while the Chuck could get some innings, I guess. Dalton Jeffries has been up there before. So he would be on the 40 man then. But how is he not on the 40 man? He must have passed through waivers, I guess. Position change for Baez. I think we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'm just trying to acquire talent right now. I'm not too worried about log jams at a certain spot or anything like that. I just need talent badly. We'll bring up uh, Dermis Garcia. I'm not really trying to call up players for their first action in the bigs. I'll bring up Jonah Bride. I'm not trying to do anything flashy here. I'm just doing what they're kind of forcing me to do. This is a lot of management stuff I prefer to do just kind of on my own because it's not great to watch. Maybe now I can play a game. Fix the lineups. Get me in a game. Let me save after doing all that, too. That was a lot of stuff. Gunner Hogland, and then they made me a new lineup down here for double A. I don't know yet if I uh, want to make any changes. I kind of want to see Susak in action. We got Christian Franklin. We traded for him, so there's an opportunity. I kind of want to see Brett Harris play. So let's see if we get any action in this one. But the main thing, again, is you want to see the pitchers. I don't mind if I have to go play a few player lock games on my own to get some more gameplay with guys. But at least getting, you know, a full game here in the minor leagues with each the double A AA and triple A teams will give me something to work with for the next video. Any chance you could check out the current standings, trying to look ahead and see who was fighting for the first pick? Yeah, I can do that after we get wrapped up here. But I think it's like the, the Mariners, and then probably the Nationals, 
Like the Mariners have been really bad this season for us in this franchise. So I don't know a lot of these double A hitters. We'll see if I can get a run with them this time. I don't know about that one. I forgot there was a draft lottery, though, so the bottom six teams will be, uh, they'll all have a chance at the number one pick. That's awesome. Having fun with the Brewers franchise right now on the show. Well, you can get the show to click for you. It's, it's an outstanding franchise experience. Okay, I'm going to take that one. I, I feel like I'm owed a couple of breaks here. This is Denzel Clark. 54 contact, 22 power. Hitting 273. Fourth round pick of Oakland back in 2021. Nasty. I don't know how tall he is. He seemed like 6'4? 6'5. That was close. Trenton Brooks is hit for power this year. What kind of ratings does he have? 46 power, 50 contact, but 62 vision is really good for a double A hitter. late Kane you can sign shirt and apostle 64 overall third base he can hit me in uh, the Rockies franchise I might have to take a look at him thank you Justin it was him and uh, another guy for the, the Rangers Armenteros that guy crushed me every time yeah, I was a little bit impressed. I got within an inch on the guess there. Steal second. Ooh. Down 0-2. I'll give it a shot and hope for something in the dirt. There he goes. Oh, are you kidding me? I thought he got there. All right, we're going to focus now on Gunnar Hogland, who is one of our more intriguing pitching prospects and is having an outstanding year. A lot to like. Got a fastball. He throws two of them. He likes the fastball so much. Slider, changeup. It always looks like the runner is safe. It does. One ball, two On bang bang plays, it tends to look like the runner gets there. Oh. Lazaro Armenteros. Yeah, that guy. I don't know if he's any good, like as a real life prospect, but if he can be half of what he became in my Rockies franchise, they got a scary player. That's into the gap, and Clark will get there. And right there to short. What would you guys say it was? Poison? 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 Devin Foyle. As we go top of the second inning. The one thing I've always felt... Quasin? The one thing I've always felt, though, in the show is... They haven't really balanced the game to account for, like, minor league skill level. You know... 
I'm playing with these low rated players and it's always tough to score because I feel like it obviously the game is balanced around uh, like the major leagues but it feels like when you go down to the minors and you're playing the games it's just impossible to get offense and it needs to kind of be rebalanced because now we have lower level hitters, lower level pitchers. I feel like they need to find a way to inject more offense. It's fish in French? Wow, I didn't know that. Christian Franklin. I like that sound, but... Nice job by the second baseman. So I'm expecting another low-scoring quick game. Is that Sidney Jean-Charles stunt double? Excuse me. All right. I feel like a big part of finding a way to get offense here in the minors is probably working a lot more counts. You got to be even more selective on what you hit and try to work out some walks. Maybe I haven't adapted my hitting approach enough for playing with 62 overalls. I want to get back in the batter's box. I have a new plan. What's really funny, though, going to the minor leagues is the defensive quality. Like, watching all the errors and mistakes that are made, it's like, wow, I see a huge difference compared to the majors. The show uh, did not make their bases any larger, no. Not in this game. That got crushed. Sending Clark back to the track. He's under and makes the catch. All right, Daniel Susak thought he earned a chance to play at the double A level. My major league players aren't a lot better, but we have scored runs in the games I've played usually. That was late. I don't love the backdrop here. For like hitting, I find the the rocks a little distracting and the lighting. I want a larger batter's eye. I have a hard time with the top of the zone. Like I'm waiting for this sun to set. Maybe by the seventh inning it'll be fine. Okay. I was trying to stay alive that time. We worked the count. And drew a walk. There are some pretty good defenders. I will say that in this organization. Yes, it's just, you know, find yourself searching all over for offense and you'll look for days before you find anything. I've been learning Japanese so I can play the Power Pro series. I've thought about that. That got smashed in the right center. Little bobble. I don't think I have anything more than a single at the minor league level today. Well, that got smoked, though. That was a good swing. Do I consider putting a bunt down here? It's my nine hitter. That was 
Good bunt. Money ball time. Small ball. Now we get to the top of the order. Two in scoring position. That was a fantastic bunt. That was a major league bunt. No! We'll get there. That's how disrespectful the game can be, though. I chase one, and then he's like, what if I throw another 18 inches outside? That could be a sacrifice. We're sending him. The throw will not get there in time. We've generated the run. We have climbed the mountain. We did it. Fundamentally sound baseball. All it took was changing my approach slightly. Welcome to the dead ball era. Minor League Baseball and MLB The Show. It's like hitting a shot put at times. Ah, late. I had a good 2-0 count, too. More bunts, more steals. The fans have made themselves heard. They want the bunt back in fashion. That's deep to right. Franklin's chasing it. And another close call for Amarillo. I'd like to direct everybody's attention to Gunnar Hoglin's pitch count. Wait. All right. I'm not actually covering up the, the stuff. Two and zero. Oh. Oh. The bunt only rebuild. Can we win the World Series? Only bunting. Smoked into left. I would need nine Byron Buxtons, at least when it comes to speed. And then I need bunting ability. Ooh. Into the gap, Franklin giving chase. Got it. Yeah, I've seen some foolish baseball videos. I like that kind of content. Well, I'm hoping we can get some more games from Buxton this year with Michael A. Taylor playing center and letting Byron do a lot of DHing. Seems like once a week he's got an injury or an injury scare. You know, he had a collision at second base uh, right before the Yankees series against the White Sox. I just want to see him stay healthy. He's one of the most fun players I've ever watched. Hopefully his body can uh, cooperate with him. How many games can you win by only bunting and stealing with a team of nine Ricky Hendersons? Like playing through every game manually. I don't know if it'd be worth the time. But Oh! Yes! Trenton Brooks! It's gone! I got a Trenton Brooks highlight! Let's go! 16 homers! Four hundred thirty one feet at double A. Send that man to Las Vegas. Bat flip.
Two nothing Midland. A little tapper. The sun is setting. Here we go. That's right. We're. I didn't have to wait till the seventh inning. The whole strike zone is now shaded. Sawed him off. Ooh. Oh man. I have too many like inside out grounders. I gotta speed that up a tad. We're playing small ball. We're hitting home runs. We literally do it all here, folks. Welcome to the Oakland A's rebuild. I find that the defense is generally able to get two balls and field them cleanly and their throwing animations occur pretty quick. It's not easy getting infield singles. I think it's a little more difficult than in real life just because there are less mistakes made and stuff. Yep, 16 homers for Brooks. That is the most at double A. And that one was absolutely crushed. So we're going bottom of the fourth inning. Gunnar Hoglund, so far so good. I never got the situational hitting quirk. How is it different than clutch? It's a great question. I'm not quite sure. That's going to send Clark back. Yeah, Brooks is hitting well. I think the only reason why I haven't given him a second thought is uh, the potential. I think it's only a C. He's a 61 overall, though, and he's good enough to play at AAA. That's for sure. He has high plate vision, which is awesome. He's got solid offensive skills. Yeah, Capel is a D. That's true. Leads us in homers, I'm pretty sure. I'm not quite sure what to do with D potential. I've talked myself into C not being a deal breaker. D potential is a tough one to swallow. That's through the right side. But we are the A's. Oh. I didn't realize he was taken off. No one told me. Usually, like, I get a better indication. Whoops. One ball, one strike. There you go. One ball, two strikes. A lot of fly balls. But they've generally been in good spots. Yeah, that's probably a good call. I think if you have deep potential and your ratings are all spread out, there's probably not enough. But, you know, if you got one or two things you're good at, like there are a lot of guys in the major leagues that, you know, aren't stars, aren't going to be there for 10 years. But, you know, every team needs 26 and guys get hurt. So you need even more than that. And so you end up with, you know, some of these guys where it's like, how is he still around, you know? Jake Cave starts for the Phillies. Struck him out. Inning over. Good stuff from Hogland. The Javi Baez base running error. Yeah, seeing stuff like that in the game... I think is tough to do. Like, how do you simulate those kind of mental mistakes? You know, forgetting how many outs there are, and I don't know. I'm not sure a game has ever really tried to replicate those edge cases. Was I really late on that? That was. For my Season 10 Minnesota Dynasty, were they the same sliders as the beginning of the series? No. When the series began, it was default Heisman, and then the sliders altered like every year. Down the line. Slicing foul. Two 
one strike. Ooh, I don't think that has the, the carry, but it made a noise. Thoughts on Hertz new deal? I talked about it a little bit. Didn't really surprise me. <clears throat> I thought his deal would come in, you know, in that ballpark, maybe, you know, 20 to 30 million lower, but typically quarterback contracts come out higher than you expect. And that's probably never going to stop. So I guess this coming year is the last year where they're going to have, you know, cheap quarterback contract money. And then might see the roster look very different in 2024 when Hertz is all of a sudden eating up, you know, closer to 20% of the cap. I drew a walk. They said it couldn't be done. Ooh. Oh, How'd you know you were on the ground? Ball one. His cap hits only like 10 mil next year? Yeah, I mean, you can structure that stuff in a lot of different ways, so... If uh, 23 and 24 look like they're in good shape, then, uh, you know, there's not really a lot of sense in the NFL in planning too far ahead. I think you have to, you know, take care of this year and the next year. But the league moves so fast and player primes are so short and things change. I don't think there really is such thing as a, a three-year plan with a team that's in win-now mode because... I think that we overestimate how good the good teams are in terms of their staying power. And it's very common for teams to fall off for a variety of reasons. So I think the Eagles are in excellent shape as they have been for a few years. But you get a lot of these teams where it's like, wow, this team is really good. And they're going to be really good for the next 10 years. And I don't think that ever, that rarely ever applies. I think when you have a team like the Vikings, you know, they had a great team in 2017, made a run to the NFC Championship, and they had a young nucleus at the time. And then they, they go and get Kirk Cousins and then have like four straight years of bad drafts outside of a handful of players. They especially drafted poorly for defense. And what was the league's best defense in 2017 and one of the best defenses of the last decade quickly turned into one of the worst defenses because they brought in zero young talent that made a difference. And so that team that was young in 2017, you don't stay young in the NFL for long. There you go. Another great frame for Gunnar Hogland. What do I think will happen with Juan Soto when his current contract expires? I still think that even if he doesn't return to that top form, that he would get a, a large deal of some kind. Because I think that if he were able to hit the open market, there would still be a team willing to like buy in. So... I think the pressure is on the Padres. Do you let him see the open market and test what teams are willing to do? What happened to being patient? Oh, 
Oh, Trenton Brooks. Walk him. That's a base hit to right, and Brooks delivers again. I unfortunately did see the walk-off last night. Twins should have put that game away. Oh, that's out. 110 exit velo. Yeah, the guy can hit. As soon as you play with a minor league teams and then you find somebody who randomly has high vision, it's like, wait a minute, this guy is so much better. The contact quality is so much higher and consistent. And he's got that vision. Couldn't quite catch up to it. Ah, uh, I should have let it go. Might have gotten ball three on that. Two and two. That's outside. If you haven't already done so, please drop a like on the stream. Much appreciated. Devin Foyle into right field and right at him. I don't know how we keep finding fielders with our best contact at times. How's it going, Rashad? Having a fun day here on the show. That's going to bloop in for a hit, and we're hustling because you're a double-A right fielder. How good could you be? Not bad. All right, Christian Franklin, runners at the corners. The Midland Unis are nice. They're not bad. Little Astros vibes. I got one ball, one strike. I think we'll be talking about Trenton Brooks a bit in this next episode, I do. That's in there. All right. I haven't gotten anything here I like. Well, I don't know what was wrong with that one. Nice and quick. Give Brooks a September call up. I think at least a bump up the triple A or something. Ooh, be careful. The pitch counts are beautiful. He went strike three. Working quickly in this one. And that's going to make it a very fast sixth inning. I'm going for a complete game if I can get it. Most of the best players go straight from double A to the majors these days. Yeah. He's a little different. He's a deep potential prospect, but he can hit. You know, he might have a little DH upside. I mean, look at some of the guys who made our roster this year and their offensive skill. Estery Ruiz. I think I was hoping that was a high breaking ball. One ball, two 
Yeah, Capel's one of those guys, too, that's been DHing and has hit all right, and maybe he can follow that same kind of career arc. We're certainly not going to have 26, you know, C and B potential players to put on that big league roster next year, so we'll see. There's what most teams would do, and there's what the Oakland A's have to do. It's a different ball game. That's up the middle. We fight back for a base hit. Yeah, the land stuff is interesting. I just feel like it's odd timing, considering, like, you know, Purdy still has his injury situation. I don't know what his timetable at this stage looks like. As far as I knew, he wasn't likely to play in this next year. Back up the middle, another hit. With great speed, he's going on to third base. In there. First and third one down. Little Babbitt luck on our side. All we had to do was hit the ball softer. The camera I use is custom for hitting. It's fisheye 2, but then edit it a little bit. So if I were to try to remake it, I would go to custom and uh, fisheye 2, and then I like tilt it so it's a little more straight on. And then I also like to be uh, a bit zoomed in. That'll get you pretty close to what I have here. All right, we got a chance to do some damage. How about the bottom of our order setting the table? bad tomorrow on the main channel i have a video coming out for the next draft we have in the titans franchise it's a video breaking down the prospects that i like and detailing how i see us attacking the draft saturday is going to be the off season for the main channel titans franchise Friday, I plan on doing the last regular season episode for the A's, and that's going to have highlights from this stream along with the final game of the regular season and talking about uh, the big league squad. So, think a nice, quick year one, get us on to year two next week, gonna play some spring training. Ah. I'm looking forward to next year. Where are the draftees? Have they been seen yet? Yes, I drafted them last episode, and their ratings are shown at the end of that video as Clark gets one into right, but I was behind it. Owen oh, too quickly. Hoglin strikes him out on three. How about the pace of play when Gunnar Hoglin's on the mound? 67 pitches in. Will I be streaming the offseason for the A's? Possibly. I have a stream on Saturday to do. And I'll see if I want to do one Sunday as well. I'll figure that out in the next couple days. But, uh... Like, I either do the off-season video, or I stream it, and I have to turn that into a video along with uh, maybe some spring training or something. That's what I got to decide on. Not everybody likes watching streams, so uh, I've always turned stream stuff into uh, video content of some kind. 
Will we be seeing the rookies play soon? Uh, at the big league level, I'm not sure about that. Not sure about that right away. But in the minors, I want to keep up with their progress a lot. Brooks is smashing this ball. Just the guy's three for four, hit a home run. Scorched a single in the previous at bat, and now another base hit. I'm not even sure if uh, Lance is healthy right now. I'm imagining he's closer than Purdy at this point. <laughs> I don't want to overreact, but if you call up Brooks to the majors, he might win the MVP. He just might. I mean, the guy just hits. He's so good. Goes the show, though, when a guy is producing, you know, maybe don't look too hard at the ratings and focus on D potential. The guy's hitting. He hit very well in the simming, and he's hitting just as well for me. That's a base hit for Devin Foyle. We got two on here in the eighth. Going to be cheering on the Wild and Wolves tonight. I might catch a little bit, but top priority is watching the Twins. I'm guessing the wild games on national TV. It's playoff game. I saw they won the first game. Maybe as a Minnesotan, I should uh, watch them a little bit. That's going to get through on the right side. And we wave home Brooks and he hustles in safely. At double A, I'm just sending him. Just over and over again. It's a totally different like way of base running. <clears throat> yeah, it was disappointing, you know. They didn't get a great outing from Moran there late and the offense has been very underwhelming this year. The twins have just pitched as like a top five team while hitting as a bottom five team and they've managed to have a good record because it hasn't hurt them yet. They haven't had to score seven runs to win games. The pitching has been very good from the starters. Got a couple guys in the bullpen that I think are going to weigh them down unless they find other options. But, I mean, you got Correa, Buxton, Kepler, Larnick, Miranda. These guys are not hitting that well. Very few extra base hits. They're having to fight for their offense way too much. Ah. But prospects have stood out. Definitely here in this game, Connor Ho uh, Gunnar Hogland and uh, Trenton Brooks. And then in the previous game, we didn't get a lot of offense going. We had some good content or contact from guys like Tyler Soderstrom. But Kyle Muller, you know, he had some moments in there. Waldachuk gave us a little bit more out of the bullpen. I'm not sure they're missing a rise quite as much. I think it's really just the power that's supposed to be there isn't. They're, like, close to last in doubles. They're bottom ten in home runs. They're missing the stuff that a rise wouldn't have fixed. And that's going right to second base. So we cannot make anything happen after the two singles. Hogland in the eighth. Oh, wait, no, we got to run in that inning. It wasn't nothing.
How many pitches does Hoglin throw in this game? I want to get a complete game shutout under 100. We're five outs away. Really good command of just pretty much everything he's throwing. 2-0 slider. We're feeling it. And that's for Clark. Yeah. Uh, a pitch count in the 70s here in the 8th inning is pretty unreal. Franklin over. That's a one pitch out if he can catch it. And he does. See y'all in the ninth inning. I'll warm up somebody in case they have a they score a run. I have done a Twins franchise before in the past. I began that on like MLB 17 on my main channel. That was a fun series. We definitely have some good pitching highlights. And we now have the, the hitting highlights, at least a double A. I'll need to get some more on my own, I think. But I like where we are. I'll have the time tomorrow, I think, to play a little more player lock just to grab a few highlights. And most of it is just like I want to talk briefly about a player and I'd like to have some highlights and not just look at his player profile page. I'd like to show you him getting a hit, playing defense, and, and talking about his stats at the same time. Denzel Clark. I haven't hit well with him today. I do like the Twins' new uniforms. The only thing I don't really like is their new M logo. I don't think that was an improvement. Ball two. It's kind of a soulless logo, if you ask me. Oh, we're already in the ninth. Into center, in comes Clark on one. Can we do it in under 90? One pitch to foil, it drops in. Our plans have been foiled. We, maybe a double play. That's jammed. Harris got it. One more. How many pitches do we have to work with? Oh, plenty. We want to get this done in less than 90. Oh, Hogland. You got it yourself. Game over. 85 pitch shutout. That's my speed run record, I'm pretty sure. Imagine he played that cleanly. That was outstanding. Is Gunnar Hoglund somebody who gets an invite to camp next year? That game was definitely under two hours IRL, 100%. That one was an hour 46. Maybe even less. Like, he threw 85 pitches. There were no mound visits on our half. And so many one-pitch outs. I can choose who gets invited if I add him to the 40, man. That's really what it comes down to. So I bring him up to the 40-man roster. Seven strikeouts, one walk, five hits allowed. That was outstanding stuff. Very little that's just uh, like missing high he didn't really do. 
slider. You know, you expect fewer fewer strikes on the slider. They were one for seventeen against his fastball. When that was the uh, the final pitch of the at bat, I guess. Seventy two percent strikes. All the hits were low in the zone. Ten swings and misses. Seven strikeouts. Just the one walk. Seven chases. Four pop-ups. 18 fly balls. That can't be right. Three liners. 13 grounders. They were 0 for 14 putting the ball in the air. Okay, so 14 fly balls. They had two line drive hits, three ground ball hits. Pitch to contact, a lot of fly balls. A couple of them, you know, had a chance. They only hit four balls hard all game. I'm going to take that. Outstanding game as well for Trenton Brooks. We'll check on him before we're done, and I was also going to check on the standings. That's a beautiful game. All right. So back to, well, let's, let's stay down here just to stay cohesive. Trenton Brooks really stood out in that game on the offensive side, and he is a deep potential player at 27 years old, so... You know, he's not a young guy with, like, a ton of upside, but is he good enough to maybe come back next year, get a spring training invite, and have a chance to make the big league club? You know, showing what he's showing this year, I'm in. And his ratings are going up, despite that deep potential. Like, he's still getting the benefits of all this nice stuff he's been able to do this year. Let's go, uh... Gunnar Hogland, 67 overall, 23 years old. Pretty balanced uh, skill set here. Nothing really stands out, and that's why I'd like to see him uh, maybe pitch a bit longer at the minor leagues to develop some of these skills, but looked outstanding today. I want to see it at AAA. Maybe bring up Gunner now. I mean, what mo after that, you get the call up to AAA. And then maybe Trenton Brooks also gets a late call up to AAA to show what he can do there. I think he's earned it. Trenton Brooks. Yeah, Capel's a deep potential player, and this is what uh, he's working with this year. 70 contact versus righties is the, the big one that stands out. Hit 273, 15 home runs, 25 years old. I mean, this is where I want to see potential be more variable. And I know I can go in and edit, like, potential. I'd rather not have to do that. But, like, I feel if you're a deep potential player and this is the kind of season you put together, maybe you can get bumped up at least a couple points that way. What vision do your MLB D hitters have? That's a great question. 
So Capel has 59 plate vision. Jordan Diaz has 56. Oh, Rooker still has really high potential. Plus eight contact versus lefties. Estery Ruiz, I mean, he's not here for his offense. He's not really here for his defense either. He's just fast and can play anything. He's a young guy. Brooks and Rooker platoon next year. You could have a situation like that where they platoon and fight over the DH role. This is where we're at, by the way, in year one. Just put this moment in a time capsule. We're talking about a 62 overall D potential player. Way more than you would expect. That's why I love franchise, though. You can get invested in anybody's story. Eligible for Rule 5 draft. We need to put this man on the 40-man roster so he doesn't get Rule 5 drafted. I'm adding him right now, so don't forget. He ain't getting Rule 5. <laughs> Maybe if we were the ones drafting. I'm putting him on the 40-man anyway. We'll have room on the 40, man, I'm sure. You know, guys like Astadio won't be back or anything. Yeah, he's not much of a bunter, though. So it's like, you know, I want guys who are real team players. And if you can't bunt, how can you help the team? So who else should I be talking about before uh, I wrap up the prospect portion of everything here? So if we just sort by potential, uh, Ryan Cusick, I guess, is one guy if I want to focus on more pitchers. But I'm already going to have three to talk about in this video. Uh, Luis Medina, oh, his numbers are really good, too. I mean, I'm going to talk about them, but it's all about who I have highlights for at the same time. Not a lot to talk about for relievers, unfortunately. You know, we're going to get some Soderstrom talk in there. Susak had some good play, but might not focus on him a ton. Obviously, Trenton Brooks suddenly. Max Muncy's playing at A-ball. We just called up. I still don't know how to pronounce his name perfectly. Um... But he was at A-ball. Got called up. Already showing some positives. And then... I'd like to get in the game with Zach Geloff and hopefully get a highlight of some kind. Nine contact versus lefties. That's, that's really nice. At shortstop, we will have a little Logan Davidson. I played a game with him earlier. JJ Blade kind of falling off the the map for us here. Franklin, we traded for him. Not doing anything too outstanding. Uh, we could talk about Josh Baez, though. We traded for him, and he's a little bit closer. Having a, a good enough year to get some really solid uh, hitting ratings up. 740 OPS. I'll take what I can get here. So 
So maybe just a couple of guys I'll play a player lock game with and then, uh... You get it. Let me jump into one quick. Let me get a Zach Geloff game in. Uh, I gotta fix the pitching staff now. Triple A has too many starters. All are struggling now. All right. All right, let me save quick, just because I don't want to lose anything. I haven't had a crash though since I began like changing the broadcast style, but I'm not sure if it lets me control that for player lock games. Yeah, there was nothing for me to decide on there. I don't know if that bug is still happening, but once I see a bug, I'm like scared forever. Um, does MLB The Show only update ratings progressively based on stats, or is there also a big bump or downgrade in the offseason based on performance and age? Most of the regression you notice in season, whether a guy is performing or not, I'm not sure if there's a lot of big change in the offseason like you tend to see in Madden based on age. Perhaps there is. Oh, here we go. Nine game hitting streak for me to break. That's not going to work. I like his stance. That's going to right center. We have a hit and a run better than. That'll do. Kane, you killed that draft. Aaron Don is going to be a beast, man. Potential for a Blade DH spot in spring. He has the power. I'm not sure he's got uh, enough else. He's got a little bit of pop. Might have Trenton Brooks, though, uh, competing for that. Appreciate Super Chat. Blade is one of those players I was hoping would play a little bit better this year, but he's got ratings that are very uh, hit or miss. Might be good one year and not so much the next. I've extended his hitting streak to 10. My job here is done. Favorite baseball player growing up, Torrey Hunter of the Twins. Still would be who I consider to be my favorite player of all time. Big Johan Santana fan? Absolutely. I was beyond angry when they traded them away. Ah. A couple today have fooled me bad. I like the Pablo Lopez contract. It's under $20 million a year. I think he's a really solid pitcher. You know, about time the Twins go get some higher quality pitching, and I, I understand they probably aren't going to be able to pay, you know, all the highest market guys, but they found a guy who's above average, and I'm a fan. Rotation is as good as I've ever seen it, really, in a long time. Oh, and one. 
Oh, yeah, always in the top ten plays. His defense was just some of the most entertaining defense you'll ever see out in the outfield. No, that's it. I am from Minnesota, yes. Just inside. And that's on the ground hit weekly. Hey, we got some defense. We got one down, two on. And that's a base hit. Run going to come around. I couldn't see a thing. Eleven to two. We're getting smoked. I want to see the A's play the Aviators in a three-game series. Gal off to short. Got one for sure. Beats that one out for a fielder's choice with an RBI. Got what I needed from that game, though. I think that'll be pretty fun to put together as part of the next video I do. So it's probably going to be highlights of this stream and then just basically me playing the final game of the season, going through all the numbers, and that'll be a, a wrap on year one. So do I want to get any more pitching gameplay at some point is kind of the question. Trenton Brooks. Should we do it just because we've had fun today in the stream with him? It wasn't enough just to call him up. I got to get the man playing. Move Baez into center. Let's get Trenton Brooks in the lineup. Let's do a player lock with our guy. See if we can add on to the Trenton Brooks chapter. His triple-A debut. Am I optimistic about Madden 24 after they called it a make or break for them? I am indifferent, you know. They can say whatever they want. I think they'd love to make it feel like you know this is a year where they're going to be really focused and I think it's all just marketing on their part uh, you know they always want to get people hyped up and there are times when you have your customers goodwill and there's times when you don't and your strategies are going to change depending on you know the product you're trying to push and if it can sell on its own or if you have to market it a certain way I don't expect to see a game this year that feels dramatically different or improved. Trenton Brooks is up at AAA. Three for four in his last game at AA. It was time for him to get this opportunity. Brooks to right field. Hit deep. Caught. Oh, I thought for a moment it was gone. 
Trenton Brooks, bottom three, runners at the corners, nobody out. Oh, that was late. Ooh, haven't seen 97 today. Contact swing to try to get that run home now. Two and two. It is a good stance. And I, in general, I tend to hit better with lefties for whatever reason. He just makes really good contact. Come on, big guy. One time. Here we go. Hits the ball hard. Up the middle. Off the glove of the pitcher. No advance. He's retired. Or no advance at third base, unfortunately. I say he makes great contact, and then he hits it three inches in front of him. All right, we'll try it again. Ah, I should let that go. First pitch change up. Gross. That was my third at bat, though, in the fourth inning, so I got a couple more chances in this game. It's 10-0. We sent, we put Trenton Brooks in the lineup, and we're winning ten nothing. Like base hit, left field. That wasn't even a great swing. Trenton Brooks reaches base. Hey, I'll take highlights even if I'm not controlling them. If Soderstrom wants to hit a home run here. That's sweet. 76 on the mound, 76 Trenton Brooks. Joshua Baez. I haven't gotten... That's the other guy I wanted to get a game in with. Can I get a Baez highlight? No, he struck out. In the left, out number two. Now that. Pablo Reyes. That's in the left, and after a slight adjustment, the catch is made. Maybe this is our final A-B here in the eighth inning. No. I didn't want it. I think I was just hoping it was a curveball for some reason. He was going to throw one. Funny, it's the same attendance the A's usually get. Will I be live for the draft? The NFL draft? I don't expect to be. If the Vikings do something wild, there might be an emergency stream. I might go live on Friday next week just for a uh, just for like a day one recap talk about it maybe JJ Blade hit two homers
<clears throat> Blade's got 13. He does have some power that could play at the majors. His power hasn't improved this year, oddly enough. Good stuff. Yeah, I still might get a couple clips with like Josh Baez to talk about him. But I think that's going to do it for me tonight, everybody. That was fun. That was productive. I got what I needed from this stream. And I hope that you had a good time watching. The streams are always optional here in the series. If you don't want to watch the streams, then uh, you're not really going to miss out on much because it's meant to supplement future episodes and just allow me to get more playing time in. You know, this was, uh, you know, close to three hours of just hanging out, playing the game and I got something out of it. Trenton Brooks got something out of it. Got to see a lot of good pitching. And then one more video, and this team is going bye-bye. Appreciate the super chat there, Steagles fan, and all the super chats that were sent throughout the stream, and for everybody hanging out today and spending some time with me. Y'all take care, enjoy the rest of your night, and I will see you next time in the Oakland A's franchise. Uh, not power swing very often. Maybe if it was like 2-0 and I was expecting a fastball I could crush. But otherwise, I didn't use power swing very much, Graham. Y'all take care and have a good one. See you later.